Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University on the Dash Tower for Pocket Playthrough video series where we usually play a few rounds of the game. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Rise of an Emperor Worlds in Conflict, a game designed by Alberto Puertas and published by Ford Davos. We are using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Hi everyone, and here we are for our pocket playthrough for Rise of an Emperor. This is effectively a 4x game with worker placement and card play. So it's got some, some Euro sorts of mechanics built into there as well. Ultimately what we're trying to do, we've got two galactic systems out here and we're going to be using these actions and cards to get out there, form colonies uh, and set up systems that'll let us play cards to get empire points. And ultimately it's the first player to 12 empire points at the end of a round who wins this game. And I'm playing the yellow player over here. Yes, and I'm playing as the blue player. And the game comes with uh, seven different house decks and seven different sets of, um, of additional decks. So each of our decks has been built with 50 cards from different decks all shuffled together. So there's a lot of different factions and different styles of play that you can play in that manner. So you've been set up with the uh, politics and exploration subdecks, and I've been set up with subterfuge and science. Um, there's, there's cards here from the council that we can get, but we do have to go exploring. Like any good forex, we don't know what's out there yet. We may find life, we may find planets. So we have two solar systems here. Yes. Galaxy. Yep, so I will be the first player. I start with one resource. I've picked Influence. And Stella is second, uh, gets two resources. So it's chosen an Influence and a Credit. So we go into the Council phase. I'll pick up my cards. Yep, so we have eight cards in hand, start of each round. We each have three workers and we go back and forth, placing them in the normal way. So I'm going to start by grabbing uh, this card here. We only resolve it when we retrieve. I like the look of that the card. It's an enclave. I can get a point out of that. I want to start exploring. Yes, I will also explore. It's, you need to find out what's out there. Hmm. I'll get more credits. I'm going to get some more legions. Those are, those are soldiers. They'll be key when I start fighting. Excellent. And I'll get more influence. Okay. Uh, then, then we go into our resources phase. So we do this in turn order and we do our entire resources phase. And we don't have anything out on the board where we would have resources yet. But we can take councillors back from the resources section and resolve those. So I can gain my two legions. I'll uh, put them here in my collection. These cards also come from the resource phase. So I'm going to... Uh, I have to pay my one starting influence in order to gain this card into my hand. There are some cards in your hand with the letter R on them that can be played in the resource phase, but I do not have any. So that's my resource phase. So my resource phase is I'm going to go ahead and get two influence. Yes. And I need to get three credits. Yes, three Thank credits. You. So... Uh, Maybe next time, I don't know, maybe, I mean, I feel like I want to stock up some credits and influence so I can play more cards. But this is quite important as well because uh, this is basically, is like your army, spaceship's army that you can deploy. Yes. That is it. I don't have any resource cards that I want to play. So, action phase. We will go back and forward taking one action at a time. And these can be uh, the actions that have been placed here or any action cards that are either in our hand or developed, which we'll talk about later. So all I have is explore. So I'll retrieve this and I'm going to explore. And to do that, I choose a planet. I'm going to pick this one. I have a look at that planet without showing Stella. So I can see what the characteristics of this planet are. And then I don't have to reveal it. It doesn't say reveal immediately. So I don't have to reveal it. What I do is take an influence from my supply and place it here. And this says that I've explored it. So I can now look at that again whenever I want and I can take actions there. Stella cannot until she's explored it. My turn is to explore as well. So I want to try to explore this one. So 
this token is there, which uh, we'll explain later. Yep. All right, let's see. Oh, actually, this is actually revealed immediately. So as Terran says, I can choose to just look secretly, but this one, anyway, I have no choice. It says reveal immediately. Your house gets two influence. So Very that good. is good. And take one random terrestrial planet tile, place it replacing this tile, remove unknown planet from the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I will choose to, just for the, you know, just to show, I choose to reveal this one. Uh, this one, the token is put back there. Yeah. And it says two life. So I get to put a card with two life. So there's a card here face down with two life. Yes. Now, um, as long as that life is there, it covers up these effects. But the other effect from this uh, system is that all cards have one lower mining rights available, uh, which is what's indicated by this token. And this particular planet has a moon. So we also add a moon tile into this system, something else that can be explored. Right, and then this is your turn. If you you out of tokens, so if you want to play cards, the I'm, time is now. Yes, I'm out of tokens. I'm out of things that would pay for cards. Some cards are free, but I do not have any free action cards, so I pass. That's actually correct. Uh, back to me. I will play this for um, it's an action card, and it's cost it cost me one influence, which I have. Yes. And the effect is explore two cards or tiles on the worlds in conflict area, which is basically here or here. Uh, if you reveal a planet or a moon, your house gets as much influence as its life level. So that's actually good. I want to go ahead and explore this. Yep, so life is explored the same way as planet. Cards. Yep. As with the planet, I can choose to hide it and then put my influence token. And this one I learn something that Tarrant doesn't know he so I'm gonna keep it hidden um, I'm gonna resolve that later all right yep my second explore I will choose to have a look at this terrestrial planet all right so this one here um, I want to refill it so that I get the influence so it has two life yes um, again this token stays and then leave it there and it has two uh, life so we got the we get another, another life, life two cards. card so um there are one two or three lives so this one is also two lives you're out of actions yep um uh, that is done i'm going to try to keep this for later okay so that means we move on to the development stage and so the first thing we do in the development stage is resolve development cards that were there from previous rounds which doesn't happen yet. Uh, so now we place new cards down on the development area. So what we can do is we can take any cards from our hand which have these, uh, these circles here. This shows us how much those need to be developed to be played. We can play them face down on our board. And we'll do the same, so... And this, is, two. Yeah, and this is to keep them secret from our opponents, so we can look at these as much as we wish. And then we get four development tokens to distribute among these cards. As long as each card has one development token by the end, uh, we can work out whichever order we want. And once one has reached its requirement, then it can be... Uh, triggered into play on subsequent rounds. All right, and to end the round, we check for a winner, which of course hasn't happened after one round. We can discard as many cards as we want from hand. I'll discard this as well from last time. Yeah. And then and draw then, back to eight. Yes, draw back up to eight. Okay. Then we move into the next round. And first, the Regency changes hands. Uh, we add two new council cards and sweep out any that get pushed off the board. So that's one per player. And then it's time to place workers once again. So my first action, I want to try to colonize something, which I will show later. And there's a line here at the top, means that I need two of my workers to activate this action. 
All right, if you're going to have a colony out there, I'm going to jump in and try to gain some mineral rights. Oh, <laughs> and my last one is to go there. Karen didn't go there, so I can see that you have some military or ready to attack or whatever, and I will go there. Okay. I actually want to get my development going more quickly, so I'm going to place there to get another development token. And I'm going to... I'm very short on anything. I need some some influence, so I'm That's going to correct. go there. So I go first on my resource phase. Yes. Again, I can play a resource card if I want to, or if I have it. I will take this one first. So I will go ahead and take two legions. And these are... Um, I can't place this, even if I have... Somewhere I can place, I can't place it until the next round. So I get uh, two influence for this, and I get one extra development token for this, and I'm going to put it onto this one. So as you can see at home, uh, I will now I now meet the requirements here, so I'll be able to play this in the appropriate phase. Stella, of course, does not know that yet. Now it is the action phase. Yes. I would like to colonize. Surprise! No? <laughs> no. This one. So, influence token goes away. It's just a mark that I've seen it. You can have a look at any time. And this is an alien runes. So we can see that there was life here once, but Correct. there is not now. And that means the planet is uh, open for colonizing. Yeah. So, I'll go ahead and colonize that one. Yes. So we get you a little uh, colony token this here. This is really cute. This is obviously a prototype, but it is, you know, it's a 3D piece, as you can yes. see here. Yep, so uh, this is a non-hostile planet and it's stable, so it doesn't cost anything extra. And then you get one empire point for having a colony. And here it is. Yep. And this card says the first house to place a colony on this planet or moon gets another empire point. Mm -hmm. And then this card is removed from the game. Ooh, so that's the go. one. That's the one that I was talking about. Taryn doesn't know about that, and I want to make sure that I colonize that first. Mm, two point colony there, and it's got one potential uh, mineral rights there. And this was why I placed mineral rights here. Mm. Now I can take an action to claim the mineral rights. So Stella has the colony, but I have the rights to mine it. So at least I will get uh, the money income for that. And because I was the first player to place, uh, to claim mineral rights on the planet, I gain one credit per available mineral rights, which is one. My turn next. I'm going to use this card, um, flip it, and you can see that there are two dots. I spent those two dots to explore any two cards or tiles in the world of conflict as long as they are in the same system. And my house gets two. So I will go and explore this one. Uh, so this is actually a civilization and it says on the top right of the card and I can, you know, this it says cannot be subdued, which is there's another subdued and I can also do diplomacy. So I'm going to put it face down for now and then put my marker here and I will go ahead and get to influence. Yes. And then I will explore the moon. Let's explore the moon. Let's see what's in the moon. So there's mining rights there but life is not detected. So, I again, I can face it up or down, but I'll just... Of course, it always yeah. makes sense... Uh, to hide it from opponents. To hide it from opponents, because once your token's on it, you can reveal it at any time, including right before you interact with it. Correct. Um, I pass, I'm out of actions. And so do I. I pass, and this gets discarded. Yes, that is an A star, so that gets discarded. All right, and now we go on to do the development phase. And this time a little bit more happens because we have some cards in development. So what I have here, I've got a card that can be action or development that a costs three tokens. I'm going to use the development effect. So I drop all of these tokens down here. They're done. And I'm going to add this to my blue development pile, like so. The effect is my tech increases by one. So there are some cards that require a certain amount of tech to build. And it also says if I already have another scientist card developed, I get one point. So I'm hoping to find another scientist card and develop it later. Uh, so yes, this will allow me, for example, 
to play a card like this one because it requires a development level of one in blue. So that, um, building my way towards some strong cards there. Well, me, I don't actually have anything that is uh, ready to go. So this, needs requ uh, this requires three. So I don't activate that. And then we just add the cards. Yes, so, so I... One card. So we add the cards and then we get four new um, tokens. I'm actually not going to add any new cards this time. I'm just going to place four tokens. One, two, three, four, like so. So I'm adding two new cards as you can see here. This one is three and this one is four. It's to do with melee three. So hopefully I can show you later. And then adding four. One, two, three. Let's do this one, four. Okay. Okay, so end of round. Uh, we can now again discard as many cards as we don't want and draw back up to eight. So it does let us hunt through our deck for the cards that we want. Correct, I just got it four. Yep, and then we move on to the next round. So I take the Regency token again, and we add two new council cards. And then we move into placing our councillors. Starting from Tarrant. Starting from me. So the first thing I want to do is subdue. Okay, I will do diplomacy. Okay, I'm going to get influence. I'm going to get more Legion. Very good. And I'm going to explore. Excellent. Um, and then I have one more. And I think I'm going to do... I'm going to um, collect more credit for now. So resources phase. I take this back and get two influence. I now have one mineral rights out on the board. So I gain a credit for that. Very good. And I don't have any uh, cards. Don't have any resource cards in my hand that I want to play. I haven't purchased any of these, so... And now I have colonized this planet, so I get one influence. Yes. I have two legions. Yes. And I can place these legions, speaking about legions, to my colonized planet. Yes. Just try so to defend that. Getting them in there to defend against me. Correct. And three credits for me. Three credits. One, two, three. There Thank we go. You. Okay, now we move on to actions. Starting from you, Tarrant. Starting from me. So the first thing I'm going to do is play this card. It's an A star or an A plus action. So I have developed it as far as I need. I'm gonna place an Enclave. So this card costs me three influence to play. And then I take one of these Enclave tokens mm. and put it inside Stella's colony. I can't place, I can play this on my own colony. It has to be, it's like a diplomacy office from a different player. Yes. Technically. So that's there as long as the colony is there. I discard this card back to the council deck. I'm just going to move that just off the screen. Like, it fits like perfectly. Yes. <laughs> Oops. And all these tokens come back down here. Now that, that very same card could also be used to remove an enclave from one of your colonies. So if Stella doesn't like me being there. Uh, she could buy that card and use it to boot me out. Correct. Okay, that's my action. My action, next action is Diplomacy. So I am going to reveal this now. Uh, this is the card that I want to do Diplomacy with. Put my tokens there, indicate that I've done it. And it cost me 5 influence plus 2 because I am the... House of Politics. Yes, because your house has the uh, politics, politics subdeck built yes, into sub it. So five plus two is seven, but I do have enough. It's cost a lot. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. And I do get a bonus, which is three legions. Three legions and a point. Thank you. Let's not forget the point. So Stella is a quarter of the way towards victory. Yeah. So I've got five legions here that I can use to defend. Yes. Okay, my next action, I'm going to explore. So I've already looked at this one, so I'm going to reveal it now. And place a new life card on top of it. And then I'm going to explore that life card. So this is what I, what I can see. Um, it is not a reveal immediately card. So once again, I'm just going to uh, prove I've seen it. Up to me now. This one is ready to go, so three 
resources are fulfilled. This one is Cancel and it's an A plus, so use it as action. Plus one to my tech or military level and my house get one credit. So I'll go ahead and get myself a credit. Yes. And I will add it to, um, it's, as it said, military or um, tech. So I'm going to do it at, as tech. Yes, and the cost of the card is to influence. Thank you, and now I will play that, paint it now. Yes, and we'll discard this. Yep. Okay, and now it's my turn, and I'm going to take the subdue action. So, what this means, I reveal this card here. This is an alien race, and I'm going to try to subdue that race to put my colony on the planet. Okay. Now, this is not the, not the strongest race, it's only got uh, one additional military power. But essentially what we'll do is set up for a battle. So I'm going to first send my legions in, both of my two legions, to form part of this battle. Now the alien has five legions, so I'll just use the, uh, the non-player green colours here. And Stella's going to control the aliens. So the next thing we do is we draw a battle card. And because this is with aliens, we resolve the bottom part. And this one's actually good for me. It says the aliens have one fewer legion in this battle. So it's two to four in terms of legions. The next thing that happens is we each get a set of initiative tokens, numbered one to four, and a set of eight tactics cards. And these are going to be how we wage the battle. So we'll just break this system out so we can just see the battle now. Here is the alien with four legions, and here is me with two. From our deck of initiative cards and tactics cards, we each simultaneously choose one of each. And then we reveal. Now we check initiative order. In this case it's tied, so we're going to uh, flick the coin to see who goes first. Um, and because we have a different icon here, that's what we'll use. So Stella goes first. So, the first thing is, are you going to assign a legion to the top initiative? Yes, I am. Of course. Okay, so that will... Um, let's blow it up. It will cause me to lose one legion unless I assign a legion, because I've got a trap, I can assign that to cancel that effect. So, mine is blow it up at the enemy house or race. Loses one. Yes. But well, you cancelled it. Yes. Now, the second line, uh, this will resolve depending on which, whether you have a higher or lower initiative. So Stellar's would resolve if it were a higher initiative, mine would resolve for lower. We have equal, so neither of those resolves. Next, we flip the coin of fate, and if it lands on the side that matches your card, something negative happens. So I'll just flip it here, and it came up on this side. So the negative effect happens to the aliens, which is the house loses one legion. Then we remove these initiative tokens and do it again. So, choose a tactics card and choose an initiative token. Yep, reveal. Reveal. Hmm. Okay, so you've got higher initiative, you resolve yours first. So, they shall not pass. You can spend a legion to make me lose a legion. Let's do that, because that sounds fun yep. for me. So that means I lose my last remaining inactive legion, and I can't resolve my top effect. Sorry, Tara. So I lose out on two potential military power. All right, now we look at the initiative ones. We both are looking for the lower initiative, but only I have it. So Stella's doesn't resolve. And I make Stella, or the alien, lose one legion. So now neither of us has active legions, hmm. <laughs> which means on the third assault, the legion row is not going to happen. Now we flip the coin of fate one more time. And this time, once again, it's the aliens who lose. So house loses one legion. Uh, this time it'll, it's one of the assigned ones. Uh, the effect still has resolved, but it comes from there and also loses one military power for this battle. So this is a very much a battle of attrition. And that's the end of the second assault. So we move these off, and we choose our third assault. All right, so we put the third ones down. This is the third and final assault. Mm. 
and we reveal. So this time we again have the same initiative. Um, in this case you're going to see it's not really going to matter. So neither of us has legions left so we can't resolve the top objective. Correct. Neither of us is above or below the other so we can't resolve the second objective which means everything comes down to the coin of fate. So we flip that and it comes up sun. So uh, the aliens, your house loses one legion. So the aliens lose another legion. Uh, and mine doesn't resolve, which was to cancel the negative effect on the opponent. So now we add up the final score. And this was a, you know, there weren't a lot of legions in this battle. But essentially your final score in a battle is any modifiers you've got, any legions you've got left, uh, any points you gain from here, there are some support cards you can play, uh, plus your military level on your board. So the alien race here has a military level of one, minus one, with no legions, so that's a final score of zero. I have one leftover legion, and that's a score of one, and that means I win the battle. So that means I have subdued this alien race. So back to the main scenario, uh, I get to place a colony here, because I still have one legion left over to act as a garrison. I place a subdue token here. I get one point for having that colony. And I get this bonus here, which is three influence. And then finally, uh, there, there are some credits on offer for me in future resource phases. And so there we go. That is how the battle works. And I have got my first colony. I've got nothing else to do. Okay. I'm going to now play a card from my hand. I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here by playing an illegal card. So the card that shows this icon down in the bottom corner is illegal. This card costs me two credits. Now what will happen here is there are some actions I can take including the legalize effect here that make this card legal. And if I do that no one can um, punish me for doing it illegally. But I'm not going to do that. I don't have anything there. What I'm now doing is taking a risk that Stella has a card that will catch me for doing something illegal. Um, and if she does, it's going to hurt me. If she does not, then I get the effect of the card. I'm not going to play a card. I'm not saying I do have it or not. I just not going to play a card. Excellent. So I don't lose the money I spent. My choice is here. I can either gain five credits or I can gain one of these um, special research cards. Uh, there's a separate deck for those, but I actually really need the credits at the moment. So I'm going to do that. And that's my last action as well. So now we'll go into the development phase. We get to reveal development cards. And I'm going to play this one, Life Support. So I've got one in my development stack for blue. So that's okay. This needs three tech. But what I can do is play a support card from my hand for one credit. And this is why I needed the credit. Mm -hmm. uh, to reduce another card's required tech level by two. So now I've got one plus two tech, which gives me enough to play this card for two credits as a house skill. So it's got the letter H. It's a house skill and it's a passive effect that I will have on an ongoing basis. So now I can place colonies on hostile planets or moons uh, without the special terraforming card I normally need to do that. That's really good. So that's my card. Um, are your cards ready to be? No, not ready. So now we can put new development cards down and move up to four of these tokens. Very good. So you'll be able to reveal them next round. Then we check to see if anyone wins, which we haven't. We discard cards and draw back up to eight. And that is the end of the third round and the end of our pocket playthrough for Rise of an Emperor. So we've shown you a lot of the different mechanics uh, that you can have in this game, really only through the first three rounds of the game. Obviously the battles and the powers that you'll get will escalate as you develop cards up and are able to get ones at higher tech levels. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of escalation in the game as it progresses further. One thing that we haven't done is the 
claim mineral rights, so I can take back your, you know, the yep. mineral right that you put on the board, and the um, invasion. Invasions. That is, of course, where we start attacking each other. So this is a forex. There's a the exterminate element, and that really comes through the invasion action. Um, we spoke about illegal cards, and some of those can become very strong. Um, there's also the special researches and alien artifacts, which are stronger cards that can be uh, picked up in different ways. There's a lot of different sorts of life in the game. Uh, we actually came across sentient life. We intentionally uh, brought out more sentient life than you'll get. There's a lot more cards which are, say, primitive life or discovering empty worlds, um, different sorts of atmosphere. There's not life everywhere out here, but there's enough life that, uh, that you need to move your strategies around what you find. There's also special uh, locations. So if you've got a colony, that allows you to play special location cards. So cool. They have these little tokens that come on the board because there's a limited number of those per colony, but some of them are, are full, some mm. of them are half. So, so, yeah, a wide range of things you can do as you explore the worlds and rise to become the Emperor. Uh, there is also an expansion from the Void. So we'll show that here. We've got another, another player board, a little bit of a difference here. Um, different sorts of cards. Some more cards and tokens and uh, some of the life from the first game uh, now come with their own boards here and some extra effects. So plenty to explore in Rise of an Emperor. And that's our pocket playthrough for Rise of an Emperor Worlds in Conflict. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Rise of an Emperor is going to Kickstarter. So we'll put in the link description below when it is live so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. See you next time.